Well, I wanted to tell you a, a different story this evening. Um, it's a story that started with some hardship and some difficulty. It's about a little girl named Martha. And Martha lived many years ago. And Martha was part of a family that was going through a major crisis. Martha's mother had cancer. And this was many years ago when, when they could not treat that as effectively, and so Martha's mother went downhill rapidly. Martha was one of five children, and it seemed to her that this was the hardest on her. Martha was the shyest of the five children. If a child was ever forgotten or set off to the side, that was always Martha. She was right in the middle. She wasn't the oldest. She wasn't the youngest. There are three older brothers and her younger sister. She, she wasn't the only girl, and she was the shyest by far of all five. And Martha knew that her mother was going to die. She could see it in how her mother was going downhill. Um, she could see the beauty just draining out of her. She could tell by how often the doctors would come to visit. And her father confirmed it when he sat each one of them down and Martha amongst them and said, your mother is going to go to heaven soon. And it just broke Martha's heart. But there, just at the end, Martha's mother asked to talk just with Martha. And so Martha came into her room and climbed up on her bed, and, and her mother was laying there frail and weak. And... She had her last conversation with her mother. Her mother said, Martha, I, I know you know, I know your father has told you that I am going to die soon. That I'm going to go to heaven. But I want you to know something very special. I've never told you this before. I've never told anyone this. But Martha, you are my favorite child. I love your brothers and I love your sister, but you are my favorite. I think you remind me most of myself when I was little. I want you to know after I'm gone how much I love you and how special you are to me. In fact, I have a gift for you. And out from under the covers, she took her thin hand and it was a beautiful ruby ring that she gave to Martha. And she said, this is a special reminder for you of how much I love you. Keep it hidden from your brothers and your sister. But when you see it, when you remember this ring, remember how special you are to me and how much I love you. You know, years later, Martha realized that it wasn't even a real ruby. It was a piece of glass. But the symbolism and the reminder of that conversation changed Martha. It got her through her mother's death and funeral. When Martha would go to school, she would remember how special she was. She would remember the ring that her mother gave her, and she would try hard, and she excelled. She did so well in school that she went on to have a very successful career. And when Martha started dating as a young teenager, she remembered that conversation with her mother and how special she was, and she only dated boys who treated her as special as she knew that she was. And she found a great guy. And they fell in love. And they got married. And had a wonderful marriage. And when they moved on to raising children, Martha raised her own children with that same special sense that her mother had given her of how special and treasured they were. That conversation and that ring changed her life. 
changed her family, changed her career. And in fact, it was many years later when she was gathered together with her brothers and her sister, and they were talking about their lives and how they had turned out, because each and every one of those kids, in their own way, had succeeded both in family and in life together. And Martha could not contain the secret anymore. From a long chain where she wore the ring around her neck, she drew out the ring and she started to tell her brothers and her sister about the conversation. And one by one, each of them pulled out an identical ruby ring and told of the same conversation. She had said to each and every one of them, and in fact, they knew that each and every one of them had been her favorite, loved, and special. I tell you this story tonight because the manger... And the baby Jesus is our reminder. It's God's way of saying, I love you. You are my favorite child. You are special to me. The Christ child that God would leave the comfort and the safety and the warmth and the glory of heaven that God would leave and in the form of Jesus come and be born in the lowly and humble circumstances of the barn and the manger. This story that the kids have just told us. This is God's way of saying to you, just like Martha's mother said to her, you are loved, you are special. You are my favorite one. When we see the manger, when we remember the baby Jesus, it's God's way of saying to us how special we are. And like that ruby ring, the news, the good news, that God came in human form and was born as a child with us can transform our lives. It can change our lives just as it changed Martha's. You know, I can always tell when the, the news, the good news of Jesus amongst us transforms and changes us. It's because we're different. We're changed by this story when we let it sink in. I'm just going to say something that we all know. There are folks here this evening who maybe aren't as active in their faith journey, aren't as active in your, in your, your faith or in your worship. Or, um, and I'm so glad you're here this evening. But I, I want so much more for you. There is so much more for you. When, when the Christ child truly comes and you truly see it as this gift you've been given, it changes you. There's a love and a joy in you that transforms you. You want to know more about Jesus. You want to know more about how he lived. You want to know more about what he said. You want to know more about why he came to show you his love. And when that sinks in, when you truly get that, you are different. How you treat people is different. How you respond to circumstances is different. There's a hope in the midst of that. Just as hope was planted in Martha by the gift of that ring that was a promise from her mother. A hope of love. When the Christmas story and the news of Jesus' birth sinks in, there's a brand new hope in us. And we wanted this evening for you to have a reminder of that hope. And so the manger this evening is full of hope. When you come forward for a communion just a little bit later in the service, we would invite you to take one of the almost 500 worry stones that are here, each one inscribed with hope, a reminder 
of how loved and special you are. That there is a hope in Jesus that can transform you. Now it's just a stone. But I hand chose each and every one of these. And I hand washed each and every one of these. And one of our volunteers hand inscribed each and every one of these. And I prayed over each and every one of these that it would remind you of whatever hope you need. I don't know what that hope is. You don't know what that hope is. But I pray that it will remind you when you need it of the hope of the Christ child born for all of us to show us forever God's love and God's hope. Amen.